Gary Shapiro. I'm president and CEO of the Consumer Technology Association. We are a um, national, actually that we also include Canada, US and Canadian organization uh, representing the technology industry. We have well over 1,200 members, corporate members, um, and we own and produce the CES, which is the world's coolest, funnest, most exciting innovation event. It's the largest, just, I just came uh, back last week from the Trade Show Executive Awards, and we were awarded the number one show based on size in 2002, which was our smallest show in like 20 years. That was the Omicron show for the experts in the room. Um, and it went, it went forward, uh, it was one of the few, but in 2022, or one of the biggest. But in addition to producing our shows, which we're well known for, we also produce a tremendous amount of research. Uh, we're advocates, we advocate uh, before government, state and local and national, and sometimes other countries. Um, and we communicate things, we create standards, we focused on HCTV, we just announced recently uh, last week a major effort on artificial intelligence which included all the different things we're doing. Um, so we're out there trying to make a difference in the world, our mission is very clear and it's focused on innovation. Innovation is what drives the world forward, innovation is very important and innovation is solving some of the most fundamental problems in the country and in the world. And I'm, I'm really excited to be here as part of the UN campus. Uh, this is a first I know for many of you in the room. It's definitely, I've been here before, but never have we ever held a press conference. Since the uh, CES started in 1967 in New York City, and it's appropriate, because this is our 100th anniversary. We started 100 years ago as the Radio Manufacturers Association. We changed our name to the Electronic I'm sorry, the Radio and Television Manufacturers, Radio and TV Manufacturers Association, went to the Electronic Industries Association, Electronic Industry of Allowance, we were the Consumer Electronics Group, then the Consumer Electronics Manufacturers Association, and then the Consumer Electronics Association, and then the Consumer Technology Association. I think I'm the only one in the room that could say all that. That's, uh, yeah, there you go. But I'm thrilled to be here on the UN campus. As, okay, good. I got the word. I don't have to keep like talking because our s special important guest is here. And I'm thrilled to be here on the United Nations campus, especially during the UN General Assembly meetings, which uh, brings together the very top leaders from around the globe. So that's why we, we ask that you be here early, that you get here. Sorry about the rain. And I know some of you got wet, but that's okay. You're here. And I want to thank some people, the UN Trust Fund for Human Security, the World Academy of Art and Science, um, we have so many great representatives from that here, uh, as well as Walt Stinson, who called me uh, in January of 2022 and said, you know, I, I am charged with like uh, doing some really cool stuff about human security and basic human securities that every person on the globe should have. Uh, Katan Patel, who's the chair of the Force for Good. Uh, Jonathan uh, Granhoff, who uh, sits on the UN General Assembly at large, although he's known for nuclear disarmament. He's actually uh, on there as well for something that he's really focusing on now, anti-corruption, so we can get funds to do, accompany all those, um, get all those UN uh, sustainability goals. I want to welcome our special speaker, the UN Envoy on Technology, uh, Amandeep Singh Gill. Gary Jacobs, the President and CEO of the uh, World Academy of Art and Science. Uh, Megan Lee, the North American CEO of Panasonic. Samantha Kelly, the Senior Writer of CNN Business. I also want to recognize some of our volunteer leaders that are here in this room. Um, our former Chairman and Executive Board Member and President of Macintosh, Dan Pigeon. Uh, Himena Gates, our Executive Board Member, Board of Industry Leaders Member, a serial entrepreneur, amazing, uh, person that does so many things as a cheerleader for the industry and for CTA, uh, raise your hand, Himena, uh, from Build Within, and Drew Schiller of LADAC, who is so active on our health division, making sure everyone could benefit from these wonderful wearable devices that are helping improve our health. I'd also like to recognize other uh, Bill members, Julie Alexander of Executive Online and James Fisher of Samsung, thank you for coming. Uh, and we're here today because we all recognize the enormous and powerful transformation that the technology allows us uh, as a society. And if, the U if this is an appropriate place for us, because the UN is moving the world forward in a positive direction, and that is something which makes a big difference. And we believe, and I think share that many of you in the room, the belief that technology can make a difference in terms of how we address the most fundamental problems in the world. The problem of a lack of food, 
a lack of health care. We want clean water. We want clean air. And all these things, technology is making the difference. And of course, we see that at CES all the time. And at CES 2023, we were so happy to work with the UN Trust Fund for Human Security to have our first CEN history with a theme and a purpose. And we showed in a spotlight on technology that makes our world a better place to live for literally billions of people. And the technology that's bridging the gap as we work towards the 17 sustainable goals, that's what you see over there, that's what this, whoops, I'm supposed to take that off, but that's what this pin right here uh, represents. Um, and that's, those are important goals. So it's not an overstatement to say that technology is vital to the survival and flourishing of mankind. And it's a great moment to stop and simply reflect on how far we've come, to recognize that we're just scratching the surface of what's possible. So access to technology obviously enhances the human experience and is so important to development and for us going forward because it allows us to do more with less, to be creative and to make a difference. With that in mind, I'm thrilled to make two announcements. First, at CES 2024, we'll continue to work with the UN Trust Fund and the World Academy of Art and Science to advance the Human Security for All campaign. And second, to recognize technology's transformative power and potential that the United Nations will add technology as a new pillar of human security. So think about that. For the first time in history, technology will be alongside economic, environmental, food, health, political, personal, and community security. So what does that mean for the world? You'll soon hear. What does it mean for CES? Well, you'll see a focus on human security or human rights in our innovations awards. We'll have a dedicated human security category launched at CES uh, 2023 and, and carrying forward to 24. We'll cross the cell floor, we'll see it in areas like mobility, self-driving EVs, um, electric vehicles, digital health, health monitoring, personalized medicine, telemedicine, food, agriculture, technology. We saw it with self-driving tractors like John Deere showed uh, this year, and food and waste reduction. And we'll see it in digital assets and mobile payments and in all sorts of products that, that contribute to our health, make the air clean, the water clean, and allow us to get, um, make sure people are fed. And of course, we'll see it with artificial intelligence. It's a breakout moment for generative AI. Of course, AI isn't new. We know that. Already the technology is doing so many amazing things in healthcare, agriculture, as well as cyber threats, and of course, education. In fact, we just had released an attitude survey about AI, and people are real excited about what it's going to do. And we've heard that, for, of course, from the industry. We've heard it from people. And we're, we're thrilled to hear it. So in terms of what we expect from CES going forward in 2024, uh, I announced on Thursday that we're going to have over, we are projecting over 130,000 people to come from all around the world. We've been getting a little more than one out of three from outside the United States. It's truly a global event. We'll have over 1,000 startups for, in Eureka Park. We always have to make the show accessible to those that are just starting out. And we really, that's a culture at CTA. It's a culture, the first board meeting I attended with the CEO of Panasonic was our chairman. And we talked about how we always had the biggest companies have to allow the smallest companies to come in with their ideas. And we'll have over 3,500 exhibitors. And I can't wait to see what CES 2024 will bring. And I hope that many of you will join us in Las Vegas in January.